So hi everyone and welcome to this video on uh, causal impacts in time series and uh, it begins our lecture on impact analysis for time series econometrics. So the concept of causality is a very strong concept and it's a very desired uh, concept with regards to how we evaluate a lot of impacts and we want to see how something could have been so what would be the potential impact of something that could have been versus what it actually ended up being because uh, those are uh, inherent things that we want to know with regards to uh, how we conduct policy and uh, traditionally the way that we uh, determine the causal impact of something is through the use of randomized experiments but in many instances doing a randomized experiment or a randomized control trial is not uh, feasible, it may be ethically wrong, or it may be uh, too expensive from the point of view of research. So what we do is we try to do a sort of observational studies to see for, uh, to see causal effects. And what we do is we sort of use things called synthetic controls or synthetic uh, benchmarks to be able to determine what's the average treatment effect or what's the average causal effect of a certain action that we're going to do. And for this particular video, we're going to apply that sort of understanding to a time series data set. So in this example, we'll see how uh, potentially a policy action by a central bank was able to alleviate or not alleviate, we don't know yet, of uh, 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 the rate at which banks sort of borrow from each other. So suppose that there was a crisis and the central bank implemented some action, how would the action, okay, what's the impact of the action on uh, that particular variable? So let's see how that goes. So we're going to be using a specific uh, package called causal impact, which was developed by folks over at Google. And I think it's a very straightforward package to use, quite easy and quite intuitive. So. We're going to call that package for you. So that's causal impact. So if you haven't installed it, just use install that package as causal impact. But uh, this should, oh, sorry, library. So th this should run and uh, it just loads the package. Then what we're going to do is we're going to load our data set. So I'll call it DF. Then uh, it's a CSV file. So read.csv file.choose. Okay, so we uh, choose the file. It's in my desktop. So I'll uh, search the desktop and that's causal exercise. By the way, the data set will be linked in the description box below. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna modify uh, the date uh, a little bit. So I'm gonna do time.points, okay. Then uh, sequence of the date. And uh, I begin, so the first date in my data set uh, is 2020, uh, the second of uh, the second month, which is February and the 27th. So my data set starts at February 27. It's a daily data set. So that's by equal to one. And then the length uh, out. So the total span of it is about 44 days. So my data set's about that length. Okay, so I'll have that. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna declare, okay, a couple of times series variables. Series variables. So I'm going to use uh, IBCL, which is our main variable of interest today. And in the context of the Philippines, that's the rate at which banks uh, borrow or lend from each other. So it's a quite a big determinant of the lending and the borrowing rate, or at least a proxy for it. So uh, IBCL. Then let's do the US 10-year, which is one of the covariates that we'll use, uh, which is the 10-year yield of the of uh, a US government uh, uh, fund. Uh, so we have US 10 year, okay. Then last we have VIX, okay. So the VIX, and that's TSDF of the VIX, right? So these two variables here are what we know as covariates, and they're essentially a variables that sort of co move in the same way that this variable does, okay. But they're not re uh, directly re related to the treatment that we'll end up doing or that we'll end up trying to measure, which is. Uh, in this case, the BSP or the Central Bank of the Philippines implemented a sort of policy action and we'll see how that affects uh, the IBCL or what's the impact of that on the IBCL. And we're going to use these two covariates as sort of controls to be able to uh, measure the impact properly. So let's create and bind the data. So bind the data using the zoo command. 
then we'll bind it using uh, we'll bind the system so that's IBCL the 10 year bond and VIX and uh, the format will be by time points okay by time points uh, points okay so we have that then um, if we just look at the data so head data okay so those are our variables. So we're going to use IBCL as our main uh, variable of interest. Then these are our covariates. That's the US 10 year and the VIX. So uh, we're going to set now set pre and post intervention periods. Okay, so what was the period before a certain policy action was implemented and what was the period after that policy action? So in our case, the pre uh, period, okay, the, uh, sorry, pre dot period. Okay, so I'll name that object that uh, is from uh, it's between. Okay, so the first date of that of our data set, which is 2020 to 27 and the day before the policy was implemented, which in this case was an asset repurchase program was on the 23rd of March. Okay, so that's our pre intervention period and our post uh, intervention period. Uh, starts from the 24th of March, which was the first day of the announcement, and up until the last date of our data set, which is 2020-02- um, uh, Sorry, this is 03-24. Then we have here 2020-04-10. Uh, so we have that there. Okay, uh, then we those are the sample periods that uh, we're going to have. So we want to determine the impact so let's create an uh determining determining the causal impact so the causal impact uh will be i'll name an object called impact and the way to get the causal impact is using causal impact right causal impact then we're gonna use our data set which is data right and uh we're gonna calculate for the impact from the pre-period to the post period post dot period and you should see it uh, start to compute. Okay, uh, so it will compute. So there's a value of impact there. And uh, let's plot impact. So plot impact. And what you should see is, so we have three uh, graphs here, the original, the pointwise, and the cumulative. The cumulative isn't too important in our instance, right? Uh, that we, we ignore that. That's typically used for volumes and sales, but this is a rate that we're forecasting. So that's none of our concern. So let's go to the original and let's see. Okay, so the black line that you see here, that's the actual value of the IBCL. So when the IBCL goes down, it means that the rate at which banks can borrow from each other are going lower. So th the rate is lower. And if it's high, it means that um, there's a higher rate at which banks borrow from each other, which suggests more, uh, more friction or uh, tighter conditions versus looser conditions when it's at the lower value. And we can see that during uh, this period, the, the gray line represents the difference between the pre and the post. So in this case, this is March 20, somewhere between March 23 and 24. Okay. And uh, after that break, after that break, we can see that the IBCL generally fell. Okay, but what uh, what the causal impact package does is it sort of estimates what it could have been had the policy not have been implement implemented. So it's sort of counterfactual, sort of synth synthetic counterfactual uh, simulation in that it thinks that if the central bank didn't implement that sort of uh, policy decision on this day, then the IBCL would have increased. Okay, would have increased. And I think that's a that's a very strong uh, conviction that because of this action IBCL decreased but without this action IBCL would have increased so that's a very key consideration for policy analysis in terms of a central bank so we can summarize the results so summary impact and you get the results here so the average IBCL throughout the period is 3.1 and what happened is um, because of the policy action, there was a decline of about 0.68% in the IBCL or in the rate at, at which banks borrow from other banks. And uh, on a relative change, that's a decrease of 18% in the rate. So that's quite a huge reduction. So we can see that the policy action sort of eased the market more or eased financial conditions so that the borrowing conditions would be more loose. And for a bit of context, this was a policy action done amidst a pandemic wherein financial conditions were starting to go all over the place. So we can see that 
the impact of the policy decision was able to make financial conditions a bit looser and lessen rates. So that's good. But uh, what we uh, and a useful thing is we can actually uh, get there in writing. Okay, what this means and what you do is you do summary impact report and it will actually write the report for you. So uh, during the post intervention period, so that's after the policy decision. The response variable had an average of approximately 3.07, but in contrast, uh, in the absence of the intervention, it would have been 3.75. So had the BSP not intervened, the IBCL would have increased. Right? And that shows the confidence interval. And subtracting this prediction from the observed response yields an estimate of the causal intervention, which in this case is equal to negative 0.68, which suggests that the IBCL declined by this much and it's significant. And um, the above results in absolute terms. So again, that's a decline of 18%. And it means that the negative effect observed during the intervention period is statistically significant. So if the, exper uh, ha if the experimenter had a positive effect, it's recommended to double check, but uh, that's not of our concern. And the probability of this being some one-off chance is quite small based on this Bayesian one-side tail probability. So I hope you see how kind of easy it is to do this sort of causal impact analysis using the causal impact package, which is a very powerful package. And I think you can see that it has a lot of uses with regards to determining the impact of certain policy actions, particularly in the context of time series. So I'll leave it there. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.